El Diario La Prensa, the oldest Spanish newspaper in the nation, is opening its photo archives to the public for the first time in its 100-plus year history. Here now telling us more about this history, uh, history preservation project. Also, it's in conjunction with partnership with Columbia University. We welcome now former Bronx Bureau Chief for El Diario and Bronxnet's very own Javier Gomez. And Javier, good to have you. Good morning, Darren. It's great to talk to you. I, we've never spoken on air before, so you know, this is pretty exciting. I know. We have a talk, and then now we have to do this. We have we do this via Skype, and so it's real cool. But good to have you sharing with us. And uh, talk to us a little bit about this project, because it's a very special project. There's some uh, really great photos, and they're in this thing called a morgue. And for people who don't know about the morgue, give us a little bit about the morgue. We're talking about journalism lingo here. Uh, basically, in the old days, before digital photography came around, uh, newspapers placed photos in vaults. Over the years, uh, these became huge uh, storage rooms filled with boxes, and then they converted the name to morgues, as in photo morgue. And whenever reporters were writing stories that needed background, things that happened in the past, they would go into the morgue mm -hmm. and then search pull the boxes and start opening them and finding all these treasures filled with history and, and ghosts and, and many great stories to tell. Well, so give me a little bit about this because there's some great photos out there and we're seeing a couple of them now, but talk about the importance of these photos for the bro the Bronx. Well, it's, it's my, it, this, this photo archive is really a treasure. It, it is really the only surviving uh, paper photo uh, archive of El Diario, the Spanish language daily newspaper, for the newspaper's entire 100 year history before they went digital in 2003. So pretty much the history of the Hispanic community and the African American community as seen by El Diario's photographers is documented there. My first encounter with the archive was in 1995, when I arrived in El Diario, I was a very young, green, naive intern uh, while studying journalism at the City College. And part of my duties as an intern was to help maintain the photo archive. Give me so, a little... Uh, well, and, and I want to ask this about these photo archives because uh, you talked about being that young, aspiring journalist and also the intern. But, but prior to 1970s, what actually happened with these photos? Well, sadly, um, El Diario went through various relocations throughout its history. First of all, there were two newspapers. I'm not sure too many people remember. remember. There was El Diario mm -hmm. and there was La Prensa. Both papers merged. When the papers merged, they relocated and a lot of the material was lost. Then they went to Varick Street, Hudson Street. Every time they relocated, a little election was lost. On top of that, the morgue, when they were on Varick Street, uh, the morgue lived in the basement of the newspaper. And for those familiar with the area, it's a little downhill going into the Holland Tunnel. The main water uh, pipe broke on the street and, and flooded the entire photo morgue, ruining pretty much virtually every photo pre-mid-1970s. Mm. So when, when El Diario, I worked at El Diario as a reporter after my years as an intern, for about four years, and then El Diario brought me back in 2013 to help them orchestrate the centennial. We we're looking for projects that meant legacy and preserving this archive and not only saving it, but also making it available for the public. Anyone who wants to see it from students, researchers, historians, or just people who want to see what's in there, uh, that was at the top of our priority list. Luckily, when the project came around, I happen to be the person who knew the archive the best. Wow. Pretty interesting history there. Let me ask this about people. You talk about people who may want to see these records and access them and see these photos. I mean, we saw some of them here, and they're pretty telling photos. I think we saw one of them actually was Dave Valentin early, uh, early on. How do people get the opportunity to access these photos, and where do they go? The photos lives in the rare uh, book and manuscript uh, library at Columbia University. There is a link uh, online uh, so people who are interested in accessing the files can um, log on and request that specific materials be brought. The material was transferred to Columbia University about five years ago. In the process, uh, Columbia has been going through everything, has been indexing 
by period, by photographer, and by other criteria. And finally, the collection is now available. But they do need an appointment because these files are huge. Okay, well, Javier, we thank you so much for joining us. Of course, we've got the information for how people can connect now, and uh, hopefully they'll take advantage of seeing these very rare and some priceless photos. Javier Gomez, thank thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you to Columbia University as well. By the way, they also took El Diario's library. All so right. check it out. Well, thanks a lot, Javier. Talk to you real soon. Thanks, Darren. See you soon. See you in person. All right, talk to you later. Take a quick break. Listen, we got more show coming up after this. And uh, if you like music, keep your ears tuned.